Hello and welcome to the December 2019 market and strategy update from Brown Wolf Management. We've titled this one Green Shoots. So the question is, is are we beginning to see some green shoots in the global economy after a global slowdown has persisted since April of 2018? We can see in this chart our global recession probability model. And we can see on the far right that this has been elevated since approximately April of 2015. A uh, piece of good news here is that this has been moderating from the highest level seen since the financial crisis. Looking at it, it's actually improved in seven of the last eight months, a notable improvement of where we were just one year ago today. Now, we're not out of the woods yet, but if you look at the other global slowdowns, which are shaded here, and when this began to decelerate in prior years, you actually saw a pretty quick deceleration. So one can remain hopeful that perhaps the worst is behind us in terms of our global recession. Another piece of good news is that central banks around the world have changed and made an about face from where they were just one year ago. This orange line looks at the percentage of central banks whose last rate change was a decrease. And this went from below 40% to now sitting at 82% of the world's central banks, their last change was a decrease. Now, we've advanced this approximately 12 months because that's about how long it takes to really begin to set foot in the global economy and begin to improve things. And you see this compared with what is called the global manufacturing PMI. And so looking at between the 85, this is the on the left scale showing the central banks that have a last uh, change was a cut. Now we're looking at the PMI and we begin to see an uptick in this. Um, in fact, this is now moved into uh, the uh, expansion zone above 50%. Now, <clears throat> global manufacturing, the PMI, is really a, ma a measure of the prevailing direction of economic trends in manufacturing. It's really based on a monthly survey of supply chain managers across the globe. And as this moves above 50, it shows that we're moving from this contraction in manufacturing activity to actual a little bit of expansion, finally. Federal Reserve in the United States has also made a big about face. Just one year ago today, the next expected change in the Fed was a rate hike, and at the same time, they were engaged in quantitative tightening, which was letting their balance sheet decline. That all changed on January 5th last year when Jerome Powell made it clear that they were not going to continue that path on autopilot. And what we're looking at on the bottom here is what's called the money supply growth. Okay, so this is really taking a look at the annual growth uh, in the money supply measured against what's going in the economy. <clears throat> and as this begins to accelerate above zero, it shows that money growth is expanding faster than what's going on in the economy. Now, why would that be the case? Well, because first off, the Fed stopped that quantitative tightening. Okay, they stopped letting their balance sheet run down. They've moved from a tightening uh, bias to now cutting interest rates several times. And on top of that, just recently, they engaged in purchasing more bonds at the short end of the yield curve. Now, they claim that's not quantitative easing, but it looks and feels like it. So the combination of the rate cuts along with injecting more money into the markets has really improved the money supply. Why does that matter? Well, we can look here at the bottom clip, and I'm gonna highlight it here, showing what does the market do? And you can see, when the mar when historically when the money supply is greater than the the what's supposed to be happening in the economy, market tends to do very well at about a 10% rate of return per year. Even in that middle clip, it's doing pretty well. But when it's contracting like it was in the uh, in 2018, the, the market tends to do pretty poorly. So and once again, the Fed has moved to an about face and is now helping to support the financial markets by injecting liquidity into the financial markets. Um, the U.S. economy still looks to be outpacing most of the rest of the world. This is looking at the number of indicators in our recession watch report that are posting a recessionary signal. Okay, so I'll look here. This was actually at two, two out of ten. We're showing a recessionary signal just a couple months ago, and we're now down to one. The sole indicator showing recessionary levels is the CEO confidence. And we've been talking about this for a number of, of months here, really pretty much the entire year, because CEOs have been very, very pessimistic, mainly because of what's going on in the trade war. 
But we have seen this, we have seen the United States uh, improve here in terms of our, our watch report. Typically when we see over five of these indicators or more than half turn uh, flash a red signal, our recession isn't far behind. So the U.S. economy is still looking resilient, and you can actually see what happened in our last two global slowdowns where, the reset, where there was no recession in the United States, which was 2000, roughly 2011 and 2015-16. You could see these where these were higher and then dropped back down. That also coincided with our overweight uh, posturing to equities, which occurred in 2011 and 2016. So uh, perhaps it would be similar this time if we see, can see continued improvement in this area, it may look to warrant a strong enough signal to make a positive uh, addition to equities in our models. The thing that continues to take center stage here is trade tensions. And as I, we, as I dictate this today, there was a, a threat again of perhaps delaying uh, a trade resolution by the Trump administration to, after the election and saw a negative market response. So the one thing about the trade war is it's been going on for a period of time and tariffs and things that have been existing and haven't changed, those are already been built into financial modeling of companies uh, that are looking at profitability and such. So as long as there's no further escalation in the trade war, as time passes, companies' earnings and everything won't be as negatively impacted, right? We're looking, when companies look ahead and the stock market looks ahead, it says, how will earnings change from where they are today? If a company was already hit with tariffs, as long as those don't get worse, that's a baseline scenario. And if a company can continue to accelerate profits from this point forward, then that's the tariffs are what we call in the rear view mirror. So if the tariff, if the trade tensions get worse and more tariffs are enacted, well, that's going to more negatively infect, uh, affect things. It can also negatively affect uh, growth again here. But what we are seeing in the charts here, which are looking at the top line, which is global export uh, PMI, once again, going back to PMI, but looking only at exports, this is clearly in that contractionary zone, but I highlighted with green here that it's beginning to roll over. Also on the bottom clip here, it's the, it's the number of countries with a PMI above 50, once again, a very low number here, but we are off this bottoming process. So maybe even though we haven't had a full resolution to the trade war, if it's going on long enough, maybe the worst is behind us in terms of the effect on global growth. Now, obviously, if t uh, tensions escalate and get worse, well, this changes as well. So we're definitely not out of the woods yet on trade. I would say it's probably one of the, 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 the biggest things to watch going forward, but at least, once again, a little bit of signs of optimism as it looks like a bottom may have been put in place. So where does that leave us? Well, at Brown Wealth Management, we recently did a rebalance of the portfolios here which constructed small changes across each of the asset classes, we still are underweight equities. We are still overweight bonds. Um, and then we're actually underweight cash because a good chunk of those bonds are very short term in nature. They're looking and behaving a bit like cash, although they can fluctuate a little bit, but getting a slightly higher rate of return. You can see we're now just up almost market weight in the US uh, equity portion, but we're mainly underweight in terms of the, the international segment of, of the markets here. Um, and we're definitely not taking credit risk at the present time, and we're owning very short-term bonds. So the bottom line of where we stand today, the globe is still technically in a slowdown, and that started in 2018, but we have some, seen some improvement in seven of the last eight months. Um, don't fight central banks. They appear now to be fully on the side of the markets with the majority of central banks cutting rates and the Federal Reserve injecting more liquidity into the system. The U.S. economy... Still in expansion mode with little signs of recession currently, but we're going to continue to watch that on a very close basis to see if that begins to roll over rather than continue to improve. And it's going to come back to trade. I think trade negotiations are going to take center stage as we wrap up 2019. December 15th is supposed to be a day at which the U.S. may raise tariffs on Chinese goods. They've talked about holding that back. All eyes will be on that. So the recent rebalance of our portfolio put us a little closer to the benchmark, but we're still underweight overall equities as we await further confirmation that we are in a recovery or the equity markets decline to an attractive entry point that makes the risk to reward look, look uh, good at that point in time. So if you have any questions, please feel to reach out to us directly or follow us on social media or our blog. We appreciate your tuning in and your trust and confidence. Have a great rest of the week.